Today's show is sponsored by Inventables. And Tools Today, your source for industrial cutting tools. Toolstoday.com. Today, I'm going to show you how I made this electric guitar with a 3D carving machine and using parts from an inexpensive Epiphone Les Paul. Check it. For this build, I'm going to take an inexpensive Epiphone Les Paul and gut it for the electronics on the neck. This Les Paul only costs $120 brand new. One of the reasons it's so cheap is the low quality wood and where it was made. The first thing I'm going to do is sand off all the paint from the neck and modify the headstock. Now I'll mill up the lumber for the body. The wood for this project was provided by KenCraft here in Toledo. They have a great selection of domestic and exotic hardwoods and shipped throughout the United States. It's a great family owned business and I'll provide a link to their store in the description down below. I'm using 8 quarter ash that will need to be glued up for wick. I have enough here for two guitars. After the glue dries, I'll plane it down to 1 and 5 8 inch thick. When CNC and wood this thick, it needs to be rock solid secure, so I'm going to screw my blank right onto the waste board. I'm using a quarter inch two flute upcut bit from Tools Today. You can find a link to all the bits that I'm using in the description down below. I'll cut one pocket at a time, starting with the neck. You'll want to do some test cuts and some scrap wood to be sure your neck fits in snug. One of the issues with cheap guitars is they don't fit in the neck pocket snugly where tone and sustain can be lost. Next, I'll move to my pickup pockets and the cavity for the electronics. And then finally carve the outer shape. To save time, I'm only carving about a quarter of the way through and then I'll finish up on the bandsaw and the router table. Following the grooves left by the CNC, I'll rough cut the outer shape on the bandsaw. And then finishing up with a flush trim bit installed in my router table. Next, I'll round over the top and bottom face with a quarter inch round over bit. Now I'll mark where to remove the material for the arm contour. I'm using an angle grinder and the Arbortech turboplane blade. This is my first time using the turboplane and it removes a lot of weight very quickly. Not to mention, it's very fun to use. Then I'll clean it up with a belt sander. I'll repeat the process for the belly cut on the back side. For the neck I'm using, it requires it to be set at a slight angle, so I'll cut out a wedge on the bandsaw, sand it down, and glue it in the neck pocket. This isn't necessary for all guitars. Now it's time to cut the pick guard, and because I want a beveled edge, I'm using a V-groove bit from Tools Today. I'm using a 3-ply pick guard material that has a black decorative core. And the last thing I need to cut is the headstock laminate. This material comes from the Inventable store and is black on top with a gold layer underneath. I'll etch my logo into the top to reveal the gold underlayer. With some quick set epoxy, I'll glue and clamp the laminate on the headstock. Once the glue dries, I'll sand it flush and transfer the tuning peg holes.
Using some nails, I'll transfer the screw holes on the neck to the body by applying pressure and marking the indentations. And then drill them out over on the drill press and assemble the neck. Normally, before attaching a neck, at this point you would paint and finish the guitar, but I'm going to save that for another video. Next, I'll mark the lines where the bridge and tailpiece need to go. Distance from the nut to the bridge depends on the scale length and frets of your neck. I chose to buy a higher quality bridge than the one that came with the Epiphone. For the tailpiece, I'll keep it center aligned with the neck. Drill the holes and pound in the threaded inserts. For the bridge, I'll string up the high E and low E strings and use that as a guide to find the sweet spot. I then visually see by wiggling it back and forth where I want the placement. Mark my holes with an ice pick, drill and pound in the threaded inserts. And the final bit of work for the body is to drill a hole for the instrument cable jack. All the electronics will be attached to the underside of my pick guard, so I'll need to drill the holes for the knobs and the pickup switch. The only modification I needed to do for the electronics was extend the length of one wire and that was easily done with a solder sleeve available from the Inventable store. Just slip the wires into the sleeve and use a heat gun. No soldering iron needed. Last thing to do is attach everything to the pick guard, drill the pilot holes, and screw it down. I'd like to thank today's sponsors for making this video possible. Please check out Tools Today, Inventables, and KenCraft in the links below. In an upcoming video, I'm going to fill the grain, paint, and lacquer the guitar, and when that video is ready, I'll provide a link here on the screen. I'm also going to make another guitar exactly like this but without the CNC machine so you can see how that's done. I'll provide a link to that video when it's ready here. If you have any questions please ask them in the comments below. I'm going to shoot a follow up video and answer some of those questions and talk about what I like and what I don't like about this guitar as well as what I would do differently the next time I make one. I'll also give you a demonstration of how the guitar sounds by playing a couple songs I wrote while my lovely wife accompanies me on drums. If this is your first time here, please subscribe as I put out all kinds of tutorial videos on woodworking, crafts, and art. And if you want to help support the show, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member at the link below. One dollar a month is all I ask and that gets you advanced viewings as well as Patreon member only videos. Thanks for watching, stay passionate, and make something. <laughs>